Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of From the Bottom Up. Good to have you all here. I'm going to do something a little different today. Normally we have a um, something that's happened in the world that's a common shared perception is a specific issue that we're to go into and then we take it down deep into the mind. Well, today we have five guests that came over from different parts of the world and I thought I'd like to interview two of them to be able to uh, start with a more specific issue that may relate to your heart a little bit and then we'll go deep into the mind. So instead of a normal world problem we're going to have somebody's very specific problem because uh, today I got a couple of questions sent in to me to address on the show. And then we'll have, uh, like Oprah does on her shows, we're going to have uh, David come in and be like our expert expert guest to address the things that we've covered on this show. So, welcome and here we go. I guess you can see we switched cameras. Lewis is my first guest. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis has flown in from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's actually right. gone up to New York and then over to LA. And Lewis has visited us a few times over the years, and he always manages. We've got these big events that we plan for everybody to come to, and Lewis always says, "I can't make it to your big event, but can I come a few days early?" And I really want to be with you guys for four days. So we decided in advance we're going to plan a special four-day event just for Lewis, and we've gathered this advisory board together to spend some time going over some very high-tech, high-quality projects that we want to do in the ministry, and Lewis has told us that he loves tech, and so tomorrow morning we're going to go over a big list of projects and see which ones he's inspired by to join with us on, but as usual, this is very spontaneous. The first thing I'd like to do is actually go into something that's happening very fresh for Lewis. Uh, but before we do that, I'll read you the question that came in today. And I think she'd be okay mentioning her name. If you uh, don't want your name mentioned, just put anonymous on your questions. But this is from Laura Bryant. Hi Jason, I know you're having your show today, and it might be too late to ask a question but I seem to be struggling with putting this into practice. The general question is, how do I do something I'm inspired to do without being pulled back into ego? In general, I know the answer is keeping purpose in mind moment to moment, but how do you really do this in practice, especially when you're inspired, when what you're inspired to do has a history of triggering body thoughts? My specific example, I've been so inspired to exercise and eat a certain way, which is what I've been doing, but, big but, I feel as though I can't help think about, but think about my weight and how much I want to lose weight when I'm doing these things. Is it really possible to focus only on state of mind and healing when something seemingly triggers so many body thoughts? So, the short answer is, is yes. It is really possible because guidance comes from a state of mind. So when you focus on guidance, you know, you're focusing on state of mind. But I feel that your question has some nuances that really want to go into. And I heard Lewis in my mind when I read it. So now we'll shift over. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's first of all, it's a great question. Uh, the question I probably ask myself many times over. So I understand why you. You uh, wanted me to uh, be part of this, but uh, the first thing that came to my mind when uh, when I heard the question, I don't know why, it took me back to the the the, the movie we were watching yesterday, Mr. Rogers, the documentary, and there was a part when Mr. Rogers is actually um, he's he's got a, a guest on his show, the the little boy playing the piano, and you can tell that Mr. Rogers is only watching the experience that the boy is having rather than the outcome of the, of the, uh, of the show. And 
and that came to my mind because I think the purpose is actually focusing on the experience, no matter what it is. If the, if you if you got guidance for the experience, mm -hmm. the outcome is irrelevant. I mean, if you're going to lose weight or not, you know, I mean, that's the first thing that came to my mind. You have to be uh, guided to go, you know, to enjoy the experience. So, you told me today that. Well, if we continue on with the Mr. Rogers, we watched that movie, and Jeffrey told you that there's going to be something in that movie that's going to touch you. Yep. Maybe you could share what that realization was from the movie. Yeah, it was the. Uh, um, I had this big issue with uh, parenting. Um, still have. Um, I mean, there's no manual, right? I mean, there's. Uh, it's really to me. It's the, it is the most challenging role that I have ever played. Um, and I always felt so much guilt and, uh, and fear um, on, you know, messing up with the process of raising the kids. And uh, yesterday there was, you know, uh, listen, watching the movie and Mr. Rogers has that song and he starts out the song and he always, uh, every show he goes with the same saying, which is, you know, uh, you know addressing the kids. I love you just the way you are. And I just... Do you want to sing that line with me? Huh? Isn't that a song? Yeah. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love just, just the way you are. He would repeat that over would, and over, over and again. Over and over, like a mantra. And, uh, and then I realized that uh, it is, it, it feels difficult, the task of, you know, being a parent because there is so much control involved and so much this will to change the other person. And I, I realized that I had never told my kids that. I had never really told my kids, any of them, I love you just the way you are. I always thought, now, I love you. Yes, I'm your father. But I would love you even more if you were the way I wanted you to be. And uh, and I think that's the that's the trick, you know, it's control and uh, so many of the other things. And and the first thing that, I mean, I felt deep in my heart was like, I, I really want to tell my my kids that, you know, no matter what, I really, I love you just the way you are. And so, so what happened? Because right now you, your wife, your ex-wife and your kids are in L.A. And you told me that you got some texts last night. That I said, save it for the show. Tell us on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got, uh, it is the first trip that they uh, having together, the three of them. Uh, and there's, um, um, I knew, I mean, uh, when we had our uh, last retreat, the, when we got together about two, two months ago, and I told you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the relationship between my, my daughters and their mom, especially the, the younger one, and you told me, uh, maybe, uh, you know, you are the factor you, maybe you need to step back and let let it play out, and and this trip for me was a little bit like that, you know, trying to uh, uh, not focus on on the outcome of the trip and let the healing and the forgiveness take place. And I got some messages from my ex-wife, you know, saying, "Oh, this is you know, it's mayhem." Uh, I mean, we had a, a, a terrible day yesterday. There was so much anger involved, and there's so much. I'm, 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 I'm in bed. I locked uh, one of them up in the, in the room. I took her phone. Uh, she can't make contact with anybody. I, I'm, I'm on the other room here. I don't know what to do. I'm laying in bed, and you know, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm just asking. For, you know, I don't want to write anything back. You know, I, I don't want to be, because I don't feel the only thing. The only thing I, I feel the guidance just to you know, ask the spirit to, to sh you know just give them this trend. To it's a huge uh, ask for love from all, all of them involved, and uh, if they can see beyond you know the ego and actually just make the connection and and go for the healing. Because you actually tried to tell your ex-wife that she needs to love your kids, like you realized. Yesterday, uh, I was gonna do that, but you I didn't. didn't. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I was very tempted to to share that, but it's. Uh, I had an experience, and uh, 
I just felt that would be really hard to to share the same yeah. experience in the, in the exactly. yeah she she had to have something similar to be able to to share that with the kids I think so you heard Kel I don't know if you were watching but Kelly's was on Laverne's show and Kelly was talking about how she's used her daughter Julie in the past to hold them back from to hold her back from following her calling and and this is all tying together for me now when you're speaking. Have you had this experience where you want to follow your calling? And as you do, what is the number one thing that comes up as a block for you to stepping into that? Uh, with the kids without a dog, yeah. Um, but n uh, not in the sense that they're holding me back. Uh, there's obviously, I think there's still... And I, I don't know if that's the eagle talking here, but I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind that there is a lot of, there's a lot that can be healed with them mm -hmm. before I I take the next step, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the next step is inev inevitable. Uh, but you're right. I mean, when I think about it, it like a full commitment, dive deep into it. The first thing that comes to my mind is uh, I cannot leave my kids behind. You know, mm -hmm. this is not about me. It's about all of us together. And mm -hmm. there's always some uh, fuzz about it. Well, it's interesting because we were on the car ride yesterday. We were driving back and Fernanda said to you, Fernanda's one of our guests who's flown up from Brazil as well. She said, um, why don't you s stay longer and come to Strawberry, which... Is that a possibility of a desire for you? Not that you're going to do it. Is that something you'd like to do? I I didn't even consider because of the uh, situation. The situation, okay. but yeah. So then you said, "I can't. It's impossible." And then she said, "Well, just let them fly home from LA alone." Did you hear when Fernandez? Said I that? yeah, I heard that. What did you think when she said? Uh, <laughs> Being completely honest, you know, <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind is, talk to me when you have kids. <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, she she had a point. I knew that she meant, well, obviously, she, yeah, yeah. she was like, you know, it, it is a big step for you if you can actually release that yeah. and, and, and join. And I was like, I didn't even, I was like, what is, what is she talking about? I'm obviously not going to do that. You're not going to let my kids, first, they don't have to fly alone. They have their mom. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's, uh, then I kept, then I thought, you know, well, I understand that that could be useful for the whole healing process. Mm -hmm. But it was just, uh, I didn't even consider that. And then what, what was the text that you got this morning? Mayhem. And, and that what, they're going to? They that they, they they're gonna they could they were thinking about cutting the trip short and just go back to Brazil today without you. Yeah, but I was never part <laughs> of the plan of uh, of flying back with them. Yeah. But uh, they were just uh, uh, they were just thinking about you know uh, cutting it short and uh, and I mean I understand where she coming from because I've I've been traveling with the kids for some for a few years. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in the same situation yeah. many times, but it, it is her first time, so I understand wh where she's coming from, and I wish I could. Well, what I wanted to, what I'm kind of using you for here, as I can, as we're talking, is I can feel an answer to Laura's question, because Einstein said you can't solve the problem at the level of the problem, and a lot of times people will get these guidances that take them into a whole new realm where all of a sudden they left the problem behind. Like for me, maybe 10, maybe 15 years ago, well, it was probably more like 20 years ago, when I was working in an office building, I would eat these, I had this kind of a sugar addiction, and I would eat these donuts, and just the centers of them, you know, and throw the rest out, because I just wanted the center of these donuts, and throw it away. And then, I, no matter what I do, I couldn't get rid of this attraction to sugar. And then finally, when I joined Messengers of Peace, and just started getting into my calling and being used and so fully done through, I just remember a year later thinking, oh my God, I haven't ever even thought about sh sugar. It was just like a food issue just totally and completely disappeared from awareness. And, you know, I could have said at the time, well, there's a lot of healing between me and these donuts. If I can just figure out how I heal this thing with the donuts. But it really was never between me and the donuts or me and sugar. It was 
I had to get into my calling and lift my mind beyond it all. So when, when people say, like, I can resolve it, there's some healing between the kids, or in Kelly's case, you know, people say that all the time. There's, I know where the problem is, and therefore, if I can just heal it, but then you stay in these kinds of loops. And I feel with you, you've been called in several times to work on something with us or some kind of project. And I remember we got to the point last time that you saw that the very possibility of you entering in to try to fix something with your daughters actually made them weak, like they couldn't walk across the street even because they were so scared. And that what if you lifted your mind out completely, perhaps they would have to heal something with the ex-wife that would free you. And so you're, you're experimenting. This is mm -hmm. your experiment right now. It is. And would you say it's going well or it's chaos? No, I think chaos is part of the experiment. Yeah. You know, experiencing chaos is part of the, uh, the, the whole process. Uh, I think it's uh, eventually, I, I think, I feel like I, I dive into a, a, a dark place which is um, getting rid of the, the role of the doer, you know, uh, which is I'm, I'm so used to. Mm -hmm. And that place is very, it's new to me mm -hmm. and it's dark. Mm -hmm. But once I get out of there, I can see that, I, you know, the process was worth it. You know, and 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 I see a better outcome, but I, I know it's all in me. You know, it's uh, like you said, it's about um, committing to something higher, I guess. That's the word of our show: is commitment today. Yeah. Have you been getting any, any feelings, even though you've just been here a day, of something that you would want to commit to to well, help you? You mentioned that I uh, that I love tech, which is uh, not exactly the case. <laughs> I mean, I do like. I mean, I, I like using it. I like using it. <laughs> I mean, I never. Uh, but I, I I really would like to get more involved. But um, I, I feel committed to actually uh, spreading this as far as possible. You know, like I mentioned yesterday. Yesterday was day one for me, and it was very, uh, very emotional, uh, very intense. Um, I don't know if it's always like that for you know the first day, but yesterday was really special for me. It was a lot of healing, and uh, but I, I felt that uh, I wanted to commit to this idea of you know having uh, you know the, the 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 talks and the videos and the high end quality mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. To actually get to um, to as many people as possible, because that's what's been helping me tremendously. You know, I've been listening to Spreaker, you know, for hours a day, mm -hmm. and even my ex-wife has started doing the same, um, and it's been extremely helpful because it's a way to uh, remind you. You know, you're not present with the community. You don't have your mighty companions with you all the time, but in a way, you do. So that's why I wanted to commit to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to basically uh, have uh, that material uh, out, there. out there for as many people mm -hmm. as possible in, in the best version possible. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Well, that's what we'll join on in the next few days then and trust that that is the answer to all perceived problems because with Laura's question, you know, it can be helpful to take on guidance as like a certain kind of diet but if, if the thoughts of the body and the food just keep recurring and recurring, it's, it's perhaps time to think that maybe there's even a bigger guidance or something else that would be even more helpful to lift the mind out. Because when the ego takes control of the guidance, there will be a blowback or things can blow up. And then you don't want to hear the ego say, well, that's just the case. That's resistance is going to be high and there will be a, a blowback. Actually, when we follow the guidance, there is a resistance that comes up, but if, if you've heard the guidance, there's also a space in the mind that you can stay with it, stay so clear, stay so present, that you ride it through, and actually everything moves out of your way, and it's easy and flowy. And, and I think when David comes on the show, we'll go into that idea a little bit more. So yeah, thank you, Lewis. For, thank you. For sharing that and taking the risk to be 
yeah. you heard of this and you're like, I don't know what this is going to be I had like. no idea. There, was, uh, there were some terrifying thoughts before I got here. <laughs> but then I thought I cannot be worse than uh, being interviewed by an immigration officer or something like that. <laughs> so that <laughs> calmed me down a little bit. Okay, okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you so yeah. much. Would you like to come up to Rana? Hi, Hi. Thank you. So nice to be here. Hello, everybody. I'm Tarana. Tarana Singh. She's, uh, we affectionately have been calling her the bomb from Bombay because she has been on television and in front of the camera and is very comfortable for 10 or 15 years. And she just landed last night after taking a uh, very long trip, 24-hour trip from Mumbai, also known as Bombay, I just learned, India. And 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles. I don't know much farther because it's almost a 12-hour time difference. So when you get a 12-hour time difference, you're coming back the other way. Mm -hmm. And you're actually getting closer. So. so the reason I felt to bring Tarana on the show for today was in part to just hear her experience and introduce her to everybody as well as go into a deeper idea around commitment because one of the things that Tarana said was when she landed here last night was that this place or this time in her life and I'll let you elaborate offers everything for her right here right now but maybe before we go into that idea we can tell everybody a little bit about you because Tarana has lived in Merher Meher Baba's community? Yes. Is that how you say it? Aftar, Meher Baba's community in Mehrabad. We believe that it is the spiritual center of the universe. It's a very exciting place. People from 151 countries come to visit the tomb shrine of the living Christ, Aftar Meher Baba, uh, who's eternally living. He's the perfect master, dropped his body in 1969. And it's a very beautiful east meets west place. I live literally fart hearing distance from the Samadhi of you Meher Baba. Fart hearing, fart hearing okay. distance <laughs> from Baba Samadhi. Yeah. And it's a place where if Baba Samadhi is the sun, then you're in the absolute center of the firing squad. And it's not a place of pleasure and fun, uh, so to say. It's a, it's a place where a lot of karma has worked out. So I've been living there for six, seven years hmm. between you know, Bombay and Mehrabad and traveling to the West and Europe and America, but it's all the spirit Baba's been using me. And I've been searching, and now he sent me here. He sent you here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Or why would he send you here? Well, um, well, I lived uh, most of my life in a lot of illusion, like all of us. And uh, I never had a spiritual um, connection with anything or anybody for the first, uh, let's say, 32, 33 years of my life. And it was always a lot of anger and greed and lust. And then uh, there was nothing, and then there was Baba. And I felt, yes, I should come here. And I came to Mehrabad and. I was part of this community, and I am part of this community. I read a lot of books, and I understood that understanding God has all the meaning, because uh, talking about God and um, proselytizing, or all of that has no meaning. It's only loving God that has all the meaning. Initially, I thought understanding God has all the meaning. Uh -huh. So I tried to read all these books, and I tried to take part in all these discourses. And the more intellectual I went, I couldn't understand anything. Mm -hmm. And then I read a line which said that understanding God really has no meaning. It's just loving God that has all the meaning. But I didn't feel uh, that I had, re that I, fe I didn't feel that I understood God in the community there. And hence, Baba was sending me to the West a lot. So I was coming 8,000 miles from India to America since 2012, sometimes four times a year. Mm -hmm. And in that searching, I heard about A Course in Miracles. And I heard one of the teachers live in New York. Uh, but I still wasn't drawn. I said, this is not for me. 
-hmm. There was an interest, but there was no commitment. Mm -hmm. And then in February of this year, I heard, uh, I accidentally found a video of uh, one who I call Morpheus, David Hofmeister, and I said, wow, what is this? This is a different interpretation of this book that I've been listening about. And the book, because we don't get the book in India, so I'd never seen the book, I'd never read the book. I just heard a couple of lessons and some discourses. And then I started digging deeper because I felt really, this is light. This is not, this is not, this is deep, but it's light. Mm. It's not heavy. Mm. And I, my interest was picked and I just went with guidance and I went one little baby step at a time. And I started listening. And of course, our previous guest was mentioning, Lewis was mentioning Spreaker, exactly that. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of listening to speaker, mm. speaker, about five, six hours a day, the videos on YouTube, doing the daily lesson with David, with Morpheus and all of you and feeling that I'm here. I'm here. And I'm here. And you, what was beautiful to me is on your plane ride over, early on in your second flight, the stewardess has asked you, what are you doing? And you'd mentioned A Course in Miracles. And then 20 minutes before you landed, they, they pulled you back to the galleyway and they said, uh, tell us about this. Course in Miracles, and you, you were shocked that they didn't hear yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought everybody in America knows about A Course in Miracles. And I was like, yeah, okay, we're 8,000 miles east, so okay, we don't know, we don't get the book, but this is a phenomenal uh, learning tool, this is a phenomenal community, I'm sure, and there's so many communities which yeah. are connected, it's yeah. like a cult, I believe, and uh, it's like saying you don't, you haven't heard about Shah Rukh Khan in India, he's the king of Bollywood, so it was like, wow, you don't know, there was an Ethiopian lady, uh, an air hostess, and of Ethiopian origin, Dipset, and she was like, all just looking at me, and she said, I live in Utah, I've never heard of it, so well, come to the monastery, it was really nice, but there's a little step that we are missing in between, so with the guidance of Baba, and Baba used this little uh, symbol, which has been a great part of my life for seven years, and seven is the spiritual number of the Christ, and seven is my number too, and for seven years I have been very attached to the form of my dog son, Subu, and Her dog. my dog son, yes, and he was gifted to me by Meher Baba in 2011 when I first put my third eye down on the Samadhi on the doom shrine of Baba and I never knew what a great love affair he's my soulmate and we we're so attached to each other and I never went anywhere we flew we went in trains we drove 70,000 miles all, all over India with him he and I and Baba and then suddenly when I think that, oh I'd like to join this monastery and come to Utah a month later and I'd had these resistant thoughts thinking, oh, you know, the ego's telling me you can't go because who's going to take care of your son? And it'll be two, three months, and I've never left him for more than a month. Yeah. And he just disappeared. Like, he just vanished two months ago, a month after I had this thought that I want to come and join this community. It was like the earth opened up and he just was swallowed up by the sky or the earth and he just disappeared. Mm. And it was the most painful experience of my life ever. And the day he disappeared, I had this guidance from within, in all the grief and the pain and mm. the ego that... <sighs> he's gone, he's chosen to gone, and the spirit has taken him. Because Baba wants me to come here. Mm. He wants me to come to, to Morpheus and all of you and all of you and, and start this journey of digging deep and uncovering all the shit that is within me in the darkness mm. and to make a commitment. Mm. And so my dog son, he just, we tried everything. We advertised on the front of newspapers. We went door to door. We knocked. People had seen me, but we couldn't find him. It was like the mirage, the great mirage of what is there in the desert. But it's just there, and it's just there, and it's just there, but I can't see it. I, I've reached there two steps more, and, but we couldn't find him. And mm. Eventually, I realized yeah. that I would have to come here, maybe, in order to connect with him again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See come here. It's like he, he served his, his function and then he, he freed you to take your next step. Freedom is the key word. He, yeah. It's as if he said that, Mom, you go. This is for you. I want yeah. you to do this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm here. Yeah. We have many stories about mothers and children where the children find, go, follow your heart, Mom, and this is your, <laughs> your dog son doing that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you.
And the other thing I wanted to explore a bit, because we actually have Mirababa on uh, on one of our websites. There's an appreciation for all that he's offered. Uh, I think he, he died in 1969, after 30 or 40 years of silence. 44 years of silence. 44 yeah. years of silence. Yeah. And he's still your teacher, or uh, he was your teacher. And, yeah. Always. And... And yet I found something very interesting when I asked you why he was guiding you here. And, and you told me something that we always like to hear about people that are coming to this community because we're a service-oriented community. Oh, Do you remember what you yeah. said? Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, the last three years, my life just fell apart. And it says when Baba loves you, when God loves you, and he wants you, he's a jealous God, he wants you with with him. He doesn't want you to be shared. That's what they say about Baba. He doesn't want to share you with anything, with Maya. So he, whatever you're attached to in the form of form, and whether it's a job, or it's fame on television, or it's autographs, <coughs> or it's money, or it's houses, or it's a little dog son, he takes it all away. He'll, like, he'll, the bait will be there, and he'll lead you to it. And when just when you think, ah, oh, now this is for granted, this is mine, boom. It's gone. And uh, since then, the last three years, I've really been searching, searching, searching. At one time, I, there were about 20 online resources I was using in tools and teachers. And then I realized that nothing is really giving me the happiness, the joy, and less is more. And then when I started listening to the Living Miracles community and the beautiful Everything is so spontaneous and nothing is planned. It's all guided by Holy Spirit. It's fun. It's funny. And even though I wasn't looking, I was listening and I, I heard Lisa laugh. And then I heard Marie and I heard David. And there was something very, there was a common thread. It was like the Holy Triangle. And I was like, wow, what is this that is common that I haven't heard or seen or felt energetically anywhere else in my search all over the world? And I realized that the word was a one-syllable word. It was just joy. I just felt the joy and the tingle of the laughter. And I felt the, the, the genuine love. And I felt the lightness. Because every other path that you try to follow, and all paths lead to God, there's about sacrifice and abnegation. And it's all very heavy. And these heavy words that I don't even know the meaning of. And, you know, English is not my first language. I think in Hindi. And, oh, my goddess, I just felt, wow, this is, I want this. I want to be a part of this. I want to enjoy this. I want to partake of this feast, which is, everybody is kind of practicing what's being preached in The Course in Miracles, which is, everybody seems to be joyous. They seem to be spontaneously light and, you know, lifting up higher and higher and just being themselves and not trying to emulate anybody else or be prim and proper and perfect and it's beautiful one of the one of the things i remember you saying to me was i want to i feel this time i've been around a lot of meditators but now i want to go to a place where i can be constructively used oh, yeah. by the holy spirit to step myself into that joy oh, yeah. in a service oriented way when you said that i was like <laughs> the whole application is for that check. Um, like, I don't even are know. you ready to be used? Why? Why am I saying that? Because you know, other course paths emphasize metaphysics and everything. But for us in this community, it's guidance, guidance. Yeah. It's all about the guidance. Because when you listen and follow, then you actually face what needs to be faced in the right way and at the right time to actually move through it. And so you were saying the magic. It's fantastic. Words. Thank you so much. You're such a great listener, Jason, and that's what I, I love about you so much. It's so precious. You know, that's right. And and literally, I have come here February, I heard, end of February, I heard about you all. And I'm here. This is July. I have no plan. This is the first time in my life when it's literally about the word that we use, surrenderance. I don't even know if that's a word. And there's no plan. I don't know. I have a one-way ticket. I never realized that I could take the risk of and face my fears and, sorry, F-U-C-K, fear and fly, literally, and to help with fear and just fly and come. It's a one-way ticket. I don't know if the immigration's going to let me into the country after flying the 8,000 miles and 24 hours. Knowing that I have a one-way ticket, I have no plans. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what the plan is. 
the planets, of the Holy Spirit, of the of Christ, of Baba, mm -hmm. and yes, it will be guided. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to just literally moment by moment be guided, mm -hmm. be used, be used, and to to find my joy, so that I can serve by being being the living joy for everybody, and not just words. And that's your commitment, is to just not think of the future or look back or have a plan B. You have no... I have no, no plans. Plan All my eggs are in this basket. The beauty is that there's no fear, because literally, fucked fear and flew here. I have no, absolutely no fear. It comes for about, in, in the night when I'm sleeping and I'm praying all night. When the jet lag is there, I'm praying. I'm praying for guidance. I'm praying, show me the way. I know nothing. I'm on my knees all the time. I don't get up. I don't, metaphorically speaking, I don't know anything. So why, the table last night you said, or the night before you said, which really touched, I know David and I, you said that I'm going for this 100%. Everything that I need is here. <clears throat> yeah. Why do you, can, can you elaborate that and tell me why you feel that way? Like? I don't, it's just a knowing. It's just my third eye. You know, in our community they say, you have Meher Baba. The world, it takes lifetimes to come to Meher Baba. Why are you coming, to, going to another community, going somewhere else? There's no why. Baba sent me here. It's just a knowing. My third eye, my heart, my soul, everything knows. Why? The facts that there is no logic. Understanding God has no meaning. It's just loving God. There's there's a guidance. I know there is no other place on planet Earth where this body called Tarana Singh needs to be. And this is where I am. This is the beginning of my new life. Where I'm going to go from here, I have no idea. I'm all in. It's It's all or nothing for me. This is like a marriage. It's like a holy mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. It's like being married to the God. I've never, I never saw A Course in Miracles until yesterday. I never touched the book because, like I said, we don't have it in our country. We don't have access. But I don't. I have not read the course. I don't know the principles. I don't really even know what a miracle is. I just know it's a miracle. I'm here. I am a living <laughs> miracle, and all of you miracles, and and that moment to moment, I know it's a yes. I'm here till it's a yes in my heart and I'm in alignment, I know it's a yes, and the next moment's a yes, mm -hmm. and it'll continue to be a yes. Mm. And I'm here, it's mm. the right place, the right time, I'm mm. at the right place, at the right time to say and do the right thing, because the Spirit is doing this, That's I'm beautiful. not doing this. And Baba's here with us. Yeah. They're all symbols, it's, it doesn't matter. Baba's Jai Christ, Baba. Jai Baba. <laughs> so, Tar Meher Baba Ki Jai. <laughs> ki Jai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Tirana. Thank you. It's beautiful because this is a commitment episode, and and this is really a demonstration of of like, okay, I want the total atonement, but I know to to approach that, this I have to go with what's given right now, hundred percent, totally, and never look back. So I, you're going to see a lot more of Tirana. She's going to be part of our television shows, and she'll probably be in my position and interviewing people right now, and. And pulling the spirit out. And learning. And learning. And teaching what I need to learn. Yes. Because exactly. I know nothing. Yeah. But I'm so ready. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> A welcome on Thank you. David Hoffmeister. <laughs> Welcome wow, <laughs> what a juicy topic <laughs> we have had going here. You've got the fire roaring, not a few twigs. This is a, a fire. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Good kind of fire. Purification fire. Mm. Yeah, we've, you know, this advi advisory board, or we're calling it now the Divine Ambassadors Board, and They've come here to just see what what it is this week that they want to commit to it to further deepen their relationship with God. And Tarana's just shared her commitment. So commitment really is the topic of the week. So I really am quite a blank slate right now, but we can just explore that as much as we'd like. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a section in A Course in Miracles. It's interesting that 
out of 31 chapters, Jesus devotes nine chapters to one topic. There's no other a topic, I think, that is given so much concentrated effort in its um, re healing relationships, special hate relationships and special love relationships, and and in that it's a beautiful uh, reflection because here you've got everyone who comes to this world has special relationships because specialness, not like uh, Mr. Rogers was using it, but specialness in terms of uh, care, comparison, pride, better than, worse than, inferior, superior, all that uh, special codependency uh, is really what all that's about. That's that's the setup for the whole world, that's the baseline. Everyone who comes here is trying to find a substitute for God and to try to forget Source and have amnesia of God and make up a substitute that's so enamoring, so seemingly ingenious, the ego is ingenious, that, that you would never be still and know that I'm God. You would never turn back to that source. So a lot of us have seen how ingenious that is. But to me, the section, what I liked about the heal relationship section is, is that when you invite the Holy Spirit in, um, it, it shakes up. It, its experience is very disjunctive. Mm -hmm. um, and it said, when they invite the Holy Spirit in to the relationship, that the relationship, that they are inevitably appalled by what happens next. Mm -hmm. So, it's imagine you've got your daily life going and everything you mm -hmm. think you are and you know, and then you invite the Holy Spirit in, and then all of a sudden you feel appalled. You feel disoriented, you feel disjunctive, and you think, wait a minute, I haven't just invited the Holy Spirit in, why am I feeling appalled, mm -hmm. disjunctive, and disorienting? And, and that is what we might call ego backlash yeah. or ego whiplash. Yeah. It's like the ego's judgment of like, what happened? Because the structure that the relationship was built on, which is bodies, interpersonal, I'll, I'll give to you, but you give to me, I better get as much from you as, as I give to you, or otherwise I'm leaving. All that that seems to be the human condition is specialness. And suddenly you have this beam of light entering in to your mind when you invite the Holy Spirit in, because the Holy Spirit waits not on time. When you get that invitation there, here, and then that beam of light into that darkness is like a, a tsunami. It's, yeah. a, it's a tidal wave yeah. to the mind. And people call that resistance, ego backlash, ego whiplash, call it whatever you want. So, I think the key thing is, is when you, he's, Jesus says, you invited the Holy Spirit and He entered in. Have faith now. Do not dismiss your brother. Do, do not, you know, judge against the form. Do not push things away. You know, really abide with this because now you've begun a real deep healing journey that's actually going to come mm -hmm. quite quickly if you stay with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you swing back to the ego, you're going to get smacked like the mm -hmm. like waves, perfect storm. You know, the giant waves are going to flip that boat upside down and and toss it around if you try to go back to the ego. But if you really mm -hmm. throw your trust, all your eggs in one basket, and you go, I'm going for trust, I'm going for God, then amazingly, like you shared earlier, everything you perceive will, will witness to that devotion and commitment. And it's a very subtle thing because a lot of times when people say, I'm, I'm going for truth or love or God or for holy relationship, whatever you want to call it, forgiveness, that they do seem to experience a, a backlash. And uh, we've had, on these shows today, we've had, had a bit of that, uh, different ones discussing that, um, especially uh, Kelly, you know, beautifully was so transparent with Laverne and, and talking about that fear and and Yet, what I've experienced with all these communities over the years and with friends, that there's a couple friends that come to mind that I would just say they're on the fast track. They have been, they've taken off like on a rocket ship from where they seem to be and where they went after they invited the Holy Spirit in. It's been almost like not one lifetime in a span of years, it's almost like they've lived seemingly metaphorically six or seven lifetimes. And people feel that around them. Toronto was talking about Lisa's laugh. You know, Lisa, if people knew where Lisa came from, you know, with, with the drugs and the prostitution and the, 
obesity and I mean all the things of the world that are like ooh ooh ah ooh and if they knew how far she came and how how rapid it was and how intense it was to go from that dark that really deep darkness suicidal she was suicidal she's gone from suicidal to that laughter that drew you all the way from India that is a huge advance another friend I have from Ohio is down in uh, Florida now Cindy, you know, she, it's a similar thing. She's another one of these, like, rocket ships. I think we can learn a bit from the rocket ships, because they, in our hearts, we all want a rocket to God. We would really like it to be fast, as fast as an instant, if we could do it. And with Cindy, I remember, you know, she was involved with a, a her partner. Her husband was, like, a drug dealer, and from what I remember, bits and pieces, you know, they got involved in all kinds of scheming things, and worked out maybe it was robbing a bank you know we're talking from robbing a bank <laughs> to joy to happiness to a laughter that just draws you in when you meet her you see her laughter and her sparkly blue eyes and you go what if we, I can't believe you came from where you how did you rock it to that from that because she went to prison with her husband for robbing that bank, and she was pregnant in prison, had a child in prison, and then got out. And when she got out, you know, she it was still the same old darkness surrounding her, hovering over her, and she basically uh, told me one time that she felt so much that she needed healing, and she said she just got down on her knees, and she just called, cried out to God, because she and her, her partner had been released from prison, just and it was more drugs, and it was the same old thing. Please help me. I don't know where I went wrong. I just had gone way off into darkness. Please, whatever it takes, please. She went on her knees. I, I need to be turned to the light. I, I need you, God. Please. And the next day, she found her husband hung in the attic. And she talked to me about it, and she, she had kind of a guilt feeling, like you make that kind of a prayer on your knees, and then the next day, talk about your children, talk about your dog and everything. This was the, and then she heard from Spirit, you know, I will help you. Now, the Course teaches this all things work together for good. In fact, if you really read the stages of the development of trust, he actually says in there, that once you reach a certain stage, you realize that all things are helpful. That's just a stage. That's just a stage, all things are helpful. And then he goes on to say, now they must decide all things on what increases the helpfulness. And so she had to really move on from that point. But actually, it was as if the Holy Spirit removed that character from her dream. Like her dog. Yeah, like the dog, very similar. And she went off like a rocket. And the same could be said, you know, Lisa was suicidal. It was up there going with two, you know, children that were on the young side and, and going up to kill herself. And then actually from up in this room, you know, saying, okay, God, if you're, I don't even know if I believe in you, but if, if you're there, I need your help. And that's when this light, shooting light, just started coming all over her, like sparks and shooting light all over Lisa. And, and it just kept saying, Lisa, truly believe, truly fly. Lisa, mm -hmm. truly believe, truly fly. Lisa, truly believe, truly fly. And she, she took off like a rocket. These are the kind of people that I've experienced in my life as witnesses to commitment as witnesses to, I need help, as witnesses to devotion, to even let the Holy Spirit remove certain characters, if that will help the whole, if that will help the whole universe wake up. So it's not a sacrifice to leave behind past associations. We have to give all of our past associations up. We have to give up the belief in our personhood. We have to be, believe that we're a body, that all of our relationships are tied through genetics or um, experiences we've had together, and very much like Tirana, just coming here and saying, I will come, I will go, and and anything that I'm still clinging to, 
deep down, the prayer to Baba, the prayer to Christ, is like, take this from me, so I may know myself as the living Christ, that I may know that I am one with God. As, as you make those commitments to Christ, to, to Baba, to God, if you make those commitments, and you really mean it in your heart, everything will orchestrate, because who you are is the whole universe. Who you are is the living Christ, and this false associations with bodies and persons and families and countries, you know, the stuff that John Lennon <laughs> talked about, you know, in his song, Imagine. All those things that John mentioned in Imagine. Country, imagine there's no country, imagine there's people. no possession, no, no people. You know, he was leading us to take a leap uh, into an experience of wholeness and oneness, and how, it's amazing. How do you, like, I mean, I resonate with this, like, okay, that's... But you said a line earlier, um, forget not now your brother, have faith, as far as, mm -hmm. like, that can be so used as a defense, like, but you're talking, everyone you've just mentioned is like, you have to let go of your brother, your dog, something like, yeah. how do you? Well, it's the thing is, Jesus has to use the, the language that, that the mind believes in. Yeah. If he just wrote a tiny little book and said, all is love, all is God, all is one, Everyone would go, hmm, sentimentally I'm with you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like spiritually I'm not there, but no, it's actually brother is is a symbol. When you start to see your brother as a body, then then it can be misused by the ego. If you see your brother as Christ, as spirit, then that's what the meaning of So it's literally a languaging, it's not it's that a, you have to... It's a total languaging thing. Wow. In fact, I had a girlfriend uh, back in the 1990s, uh, Janie, and she was working with the Course for years, and then one day, I remember she came to me and she went, well, most of the book just went obsolete, because most of the book is you and your brother, you and your brother. The Ark of Peace is wow. entered two by two by two by two. It's all it's all in the language of duality, and sometimes people even say, it's a dualistic system. Oh no, it's so the, not. So this, the healed relationship section, even, he's really not even talking about a brother. Like, this That's, is like, I can't believe it, I'm like, getting this. Yeah, like this is huge, <laughs> because as soon as you start to realize that your brother is not a body, wow. then, you know, like the beginning of, of, of the show, the, the Modern Mystics, wow that you are not your brother's keeper, you're not your dog's keeper, you're not your children's keeper. You are your brother. You are your sister. You are your dog. You are those children. That X. I always thought that's a funny word, X too. It's like, X? If any of us really, do we have, how can we have an X? If it's, we're all the same one, there's nothing X. It was like saying, there's a part of me that's over. Really? I can't believe that. So that, you, use that in your modern day mystics. That's what, at that point, Janie was like studying the Course, and she was like, looking like, and then all of a sudden the parts of the Course leaped at her. I can feel it. Mind reaches to itself, it does not go out. Within itself is everything, you within it, and it within you. You are the Holy Son of God Himself. I am Spirit. And there's a part where Jesus says, you either recognize, you perceive the flesh, or you recognize the spirit. That's the most important word in that whole line is, or. He doesn't say, and. This isn't some kind of mind-body-spirit festival where we're trying to bring matter and divine mind together, because matter, projection, separation, is illusion. And you cannot bring illusion and truth together. One's real, and one's not. And when you bring them together, only one remains. So, really what we're talking about here, when we talk about commitment, is we're coming down to the most core ACIM principle. If you only knew this one principle, and you practiced it with just one principle, like my friend Cindy, after she took off like a rocket, she raised her son on lesson number one. Everything. Through adolescence, Arvin, all the way into his... He's still... He's, he's still Visits her, he's still at her house the last time I talked to her. He raised, she raised him on lesson one. But the one principle to remember is, you cannot bring the truth into the illusion. You must bring the illusions to the truth, so that they will disappear. You can't bring God into this world of time and space. It lets you in on a hint. God doesn't even know of perception. God didn't make no little green apple. God didn't make no time and space. 
God doesn't even know of perception, but the Holy Spirit is the bridge who, who can see the illusion but knows the illusion is not true. Because he can see the ego that made the illusion and he knows the ego is not real. Mm -hmm. That's why we were laughing, we had a big laugh at that party we had yesterday at the monastery where at the end we were talking about trying to tell what's real from what's unreal. Right. Mr. Rogers. And I, I paused it and left. I said, we're still working on that one. Because only the Holy Spirit can tell the difference between the real and the unreal. And that's why we pray and we follow the guidance. If you're going to be unwound from illusions, you need to have that connection. And you need to have the commitment to that connection. The temptation is to try to bring God into the world. To try to make certain people, places, things, situation, food, certain mantras, certain postures, probably not in the best posture here to get back to God. No, God doesn't know of postures. God doesn't know of breathing techniques. God doesn't know of anything of this world. In fact, Ken Wabnick would say that and people would just, oh God, he would say, God doesn't even know about this world and people, course teachers would react when Ken would even say that. But that was just beautiful divine metaphysics coming from Brother Ken. This Holy Spirit was just coming through him. And, and we're about the bottom up, and we're about bringing up all those beliefs and all those thoughts to the light, so that they will disappear mm -hmm. and we will realize we are the light. Mm -hmm. But that's the key thing. Whenever we look at the form, and we, you were touching on this uh, with Lewis, you were starting to say, as long as you're trying to rearrange something at the level of form, you still must believe that you have some control or responsibility yeah in the images, yeah. and that's perhaps yeah. the deepest block, because underneath that there's an arrogance yeah. of, I will bring the yeah. light and healing, guidance, the guidance to these people, yeah. these poor people, these poor wow. struggling people, I will save them, and that's like, that's a savior issue. Mm -hmm. You've got a personal, personal savior issue going on there, but it's not usually seen that way. It's yeah. usually seen as, as, I want to give them what I have experienced, yeah. and yeah. it's, it's very tricky, yeah, it's very yeah. subtle. That's beautiful. Yeah. I even love how this came about, because for me I want these shows to always be something for me. And today I was interviewing two others, wondering how this was going to go. Yeah. But my real prayer was, because using Lewis again, you know, when he first landed he was late for one of the, <laughs> the events. <laughs> He's going to kill me! <laughs> <laughs> Your time issue was up for forgiveness. <laughs> and I was like, we, you're supposed to come at 5, 6, but it was miscommunication, because I was supposed to come at 7. And anyways, he was saying I was hostile. And I, and I was no, like, I didn't think he, he just said you were a bit aggressive. Uh, okay. I was in the <laughs> Is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were laughing this morning when we were watching in there, because you said, I know you love tech, and then yeah, right. just Lewis's face, Alexander was sitting next to me going, and I said, he does really love tech, but it'll it'll come out. And then later, it all got clarified. But she was like looking at the face, going, you know, <laughs> nothing. The camera never never lies. It's all one mind, you know. We can't we can't hide a thought. So, anyways, I took that to heart, like to see what what in that is true, because I could feel something. Like the last thing I want to be is hostile or aggressive. And, and the lesson of the day was, I do not want this thought, so I do not want to be perceived as hostile. And then you fill it in with, I trust my brothers who are one with me. So I felt that, and what happened, it was like I disappeared from, from Jason. All of a sudden, Lewis disappeared, and it was just this experience of like, Lewis is the Christ, but he wasn't, it wasn't Lewis or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, but then I didn't know how to relate with people, I didn't know how to go up to the monastery, it was, I mean, it was still fun. Yeah, the mystical experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to, to interact. Yeah, and all of a sudden this idea of brother yeah. just disappeared, but it was like, can I really, is that really all it means? And I, all this time I must have seen my brother as a brother, which means the savior concept has to be yeah. tied in with that. And so now you just reminding me of that, I just like... You know, we could end the show yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, you were looking for something that would impact you, yeah. and that was it. Because I think a lot of people I know, a lot of course students and teachers have trouble with that lesson. I trust my brother, brothers who are one with me. And they just, they're looking at me like, if you don't know, I've got a stack of evidence 
And if you knew how much evidence I had on my brothers, that me trusting them would be like tr trying to paint pink on a very bad picture. Like put pink in little puffy things and it's like dark and, and dirty. And, and I, it really comes down to this thing that as long as we insist on defining a brother a, as a body, yeah. uh, we will have more healing to occur because, because when I said at the beginning of the Modern Mystic show, you know, you literally are your brother, you know, that is a fact. We're not here ultimately in roles, that's why there really aren't any teacher-student roles there. There's nobody really ahead, there's nobody behind because time and brothers are, are, are not bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually, it's all one instant. And, and I love those lessons, only an instant does this world endure, and mm -hmm. this holy instant, what I give to you, be you in charge. I mean, when you start to really look at the Course, all of the, the brother language, which is helpful because what would it help you if you were in a dark dungeon and somebody said, I'm going to lower down a ladder that you can just grab a hold of anything. It doesn't matter what you believe, just mm -hmm. grab a hold. And yet your ladder was six inches long and had one rung. And they're like, okay, I see the ladder. Mm -hmm. I am one with God, or I forgive the world ladder. And then, no, there's all these rungs that mm -hmm. Jesus lowers down so beautifully. And they're all just metaphors, like to grab a hold of something. Like, there's an idea in the Course that says, God is incomplete without me. That's not literally true, but it's a rung. If you feel like you're lost and abandoned and, and just wandering in the dark, you know, God is incomplete without me, may be interpreted as, God needs me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worth, I'm going to, yeah. God needs me and I'm going to find God. Yeah, yeah. But but ultimately you go higher up the ladder and, and the whole ladder will disappear. Yeah. You realize there was never a ladder, there was never a journey, mm -hmm. you never took any steps, there was never any problem. But that's again heaven, that's God doesn't know of, of this world. But the Holy Spirit really is is in charge of that ladder and Jesus took that ladder to, to remember the Christ, to remember that oneness. And now he's just saying, here I've it took a couple thousand years to get A Course in Miracles into this realm, but ultimately that's just a symbol too of, mm -hmm. um, of help. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's very helpful. Yeah. I, <laughs> look, with this commitment issue, I was seeing that the topic's commitment. I feel like I keep going deeper with, with the idea myself and I told you at that quantum immersion retreat and everyone that was there that story of how I had to commit to Emily and then when I committed to Emily I saw that uh, movie Maze Runner mm -hmm. and it was really about committing to never looking back and once you never look back then you give yourself permission for the unconscious to rise up even quicker because you're not thinking anything could be different and then gives mm -hmm. the layers come up and, and it was really beautiful for me. And it's been a practice, but I've noticed the past few days, even for the topic of the show, I, I remember when I landed in Croatia ten, 10 years ago, I looked around and I'd, they, everybody was so beautiful, like bone structure and everything, what the world would call and what I, my conditioning was, just gorgeous. And I was looking these things up on the internet for some reason to see if that was a topic, and Jeffrey was like, no, that's boring. And I'm like, yeah, it is boring. But And then I, I'm wondering, I'm noticing women again and I haven't really thought of this in months or years and I'm, I'm kind of wondering is this like am I going backwards or is somehow like I got to be more committed in a certain direction again that I mean it's not like a I don't want to say, say a serious temptation or anything but I'm just I don't know I just thought it, if it came up in my mind when we were on the show I'd yeah. bring it up again like why now is it tied into surgery I have no idea Am I getting weak? <laughs> going deeper, so... Well, you know, it's been beautiful because um, we've talked a bit about commitment and I love to bring it back to the practical. You know, Lewis was talking about, of all the commitments in his life, raising children has been a huge lesson. And Toronto was talking about many different things you've done, the, your dog, but also 
there's when people think of raising children, paying off a mortgage, having integrity in in business, <laughs> uh, marriage. You know, most people would say a marriage is like a massive commitment. I mean, on the level of the world, that's 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 a really strong commitment because there's so much mirroring that happens, and it's so intense at times. So much times of wanting to leave or bolt or hide or run or something. And yet, if you start to see those things are just like preschool. Those are called major commitments in the world. Marriage right? is preschool. Yeah, marriage is preschool. Okay, can we say that? So we're not, you know, th then when you start to get into the later things and then, and then you get to, towards graduate school. When you get to graduate school, you're like in the realms of mysticism where you're watching your mind for every single scrap, every single thought that crosses your mind. And then you have Jesus saying in the Course, it's possible to control the direction of your thinking. It's possible to train your mind so firmly with God that attack thoughts, judgments can't even enter. The light becomes so strong in your mind that the attack thoughts are like, can't even enter the mind. My mind holds only what I think with God. Going for absolute purity, like Jesus talked about in the Beatitudes and Sermon on the Mount, you know, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Now, now you're talking commitment, because that's where the blazing light, the other ones were just little things that, that the ego was reacting to, because commitment was like being injected or introduced. The ego is so impulsive, it's like a wild child. It doesn't know what it is, it doesn't know what anything is, it's just a wild, abandoned, kind of a, a bastard child that has had no parent. Because remember, God didn't create the ego. So it's a, it's, it's a bastard child, it, it's a tiny puff of nothingness, but it thinks it's something, it doesn't have a parent. Can you imagine a child without a parent? It, it's not possible. Yeah. But that's what this whole world is, is the ego belief. Mm -hmm. So. Once you start to realize that, that deep level of commitment, that you're committing to a purity, you're committing to a state of mind, a pristine tabula rasa state of mind, you're committing to holiness. People who do the Course don't like those holiness lessons. My holiness blesses the world. My holiness envelops everything I see. They tell me, I, I just skipped over those. I mean, I may be a lot of things, but I, I'm not holy. Jesus has got the, God's got the wrong the wrong one reading the book. But but no, Jesus really means it. No, you really are holy. That's what Mr. Rogers was saying. I like you. I love you. You know, he was just constantly mm -hmm. sending out that same message to everyone on his show and everyone in his life and his wife and everything. But those other preliminary things are important because they're sending you in the right direction towards the atonement. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very important. The Holy Spirit always works with the mind where it believes it's at, and it needs that. And in your case, it's, it was just like, you know, you needed, you were praying maybe in your heart of hearts for a rapid kind of undoing. You were praying to enter more towards the mystical life, not, not hearing the people around you, oh, so-and-so's a mystic, so-and-so. Yeah. She's a mystic now? I was married to her. She wasn't no damn mystic when I was married to her. And now she's a mystic and I'm still a human. You know, you've been good. You've <laughs> expressed all your, all your thoughts. Like, how come everybody else in the ministry is going there? You're going to be mystics, mysticism, and I'm still talking to people, <laughs> texting, communicating, figuring out things, and finances, doing advisory boards, all these damn things, and everybody else, la, 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 they're in the midst, you know. But now, you actually, you know, that whole thing that you had about, I trust my brother as well, yeah. used that, that sprung you with the daily lesson into a mystical experience. And then you felt bad about not being able to relate to people. That was the old Jason. We go around, relate, relate, relate. You went, oh, God! <laughs> but then you felt guilty about right. not relating. You know, that's where that washing takes place, where you start to feel it's more natural to be at one with everything than it is to be separate pieces trying to connect. You know, it's it's actually more more natural to be one. So why would these thoughts come in again that I used to have years ago? That's what made me think. Of. Well, I think you have to realize that the Holy Spirit is wiser than you. And so if you're having attraction thoughts 
to certain people and everything, I bet the Holy Spirit is in charge of that. The Holy Spirit has to bring the people together that are supposed to be together so that they can mm. work together and let Jesus orchestrate their mm. lives and their projects. It's mm. not really personal. Mm. Oh. And and the Holy Spirit is so wise that the Holy Spirit's like, oh, I see your ego structure there. You've got some attraction things. I'll just turn that in mm. my favor mm. and give all the glory to God. You mm. see how mm. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are so mm. wise. They can use anything, mm. anything that's brought up and take it all the way to lift your mind higher and higher to God. But it's trying to take it personal as if those are your thoughts. That's mm. what, you know... You guys were talking on your modern mystics. Andy and Nicholas were talking about. They started laughing and, and laughing more and more as the episode went on because they were starting to go, "Those aren't my real yeah. thoughts." In fact, I remember one of them said they didn't. It didn't even happen. You know that. I mean, from a joyful place where he's giggling, reading the, I do not perceive my own bits. When you start to really go into it, there's going to be, like, joy and laughter and all those things that that we really want. When we actually experience that we yeah. are not the thinker of those judgments, we are not the thinker of those attack thoughts, that's the ultimate release to see I have never judged against God. Mm. I am still as God created mm. me. My mind holds only what I think with mm. God. And that's not an arrogant statement, mm. that's a real true mm. statement. Because mm. that's coming from the Christ. Christ, That's you? amazing, because Frances was just telling me yesterday, you probably heard, she had this experience in Iceland where she was like caught in this thing with JP and saying these thoughts, and she had just put her prayer out in the morning, I will not be that person, and it just happened. Yeah. And she's like, at the end of the day, what? I couldn't stop it or control it, and all this, popped her into this mystical yeah. experience yeah. where that wasn't her, yeah. and there's no way she could stop that. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it's the bastard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the parents. Yeah. How do you stop a runaway train? <laughs> yeah. You know, I always say, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stop a runaway train. You have to see beyond the runaway yeah. train. You can't actually get in there. Well, you know, it's cool because I'm seeing now, it wasn't just the women, it was guys too, everybody. It was like yeah. these attractions. Yeah. And it was just, I was, oh yeah, I'm supposed to meet them now and meet them. And, and Kirsten was even in there because I was supposed to join with her around the chickens. Mm -hmm. you know? That's a whole other <laughs> the story. 12 chickens. <laughs> chickens. 12 <laughs> chickens. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful because um, you start to get into that thing where you say, start to realize that there's nothing going wrong. That even those little nudges and prompts to talk to somebody or sit next to yeah, somebody yeah. or put your hand on somebody. Uh, there's a story of our friend Larika from Japan and then coming over and on that bench meditating and then is it Greg coming over and you know, we don't, we are not in charge of that. Mm -hmm. We can't keep thinking in these old, I'll call them guilt boxes, you know, like all concepts are mm -hmm. made up from the ego, so they're like guilt boxes, and as long as your mind is dipping down into the guilt boxes, you will feel guilt, and you'll feel uncertain, and you'll feel unworthy because of that dipping down, and then the Spirit's like, don't dip there anymore. I got plenty for you to dip into with me. And that's your calling, and that's your commitment, and that's your, going to be your joy. So don't even try to dip down there. It will not bring you anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, the mind that's asleep, you know, it's, oh, I'm going to try a little more dipping, you know. The Spirit is just there, the Presence is just calling all the time, saying, come join with me. And, and there's no coercion, there's no pressure in coming to God. There's, mm -hmm. you know, and again, God <laughs> doesn't even know of form, so... The Holy Spirit is so patient, just patiently offering that love, offering the call just keeps coming. Come join with me. Please join with me. I have something for you. I have a special function for you to fulfill that will make you indescribably joyful and happy. And all the mind has to do is make that turn. And all these shows today, I mean, I've watched them all from the very beginning, you know, such transparency. You know, starting off with Nicholas and Andy, just the transparency, and then and with Ken and Anna, and then, oh, amazingly with uh, Kelly mm. and Laverne. You know, th there was such a call for healing, so strong underneath that, and, and there was such a transparency there. 
that it was like they said on their show, like healing the whole universe. It was it was radiating out to the whole universe because it's it is a quantum universe. It may seem to be separate pieces spr strung out over millions of years, but actually, it's just one mind, mm -hmm. and the and the call from the Holy Spirit is like, come home, come to the whole mind, come to this holistic forgiveness this healed perception, come to this, that's your step back to God, who knows not of this world. You need to have healed perception before you're ready for God to take the final step. And again, God doesn't really take steps, but that's a metaphor for returning to creation. Our function beyond forgiveness, that's just like a little temporary one that will disappear, but actually God, God creates and God gave us creative ability and we'll never know true joy in the holistic, true sense until we return to our function of creation. He even says our creations are waiting for us. Like, give up these past associations of time and space and come home to your true creations, which are extensions of our Christ self, but are out of awareness as long as we're tinkering with time and space. So that's what the Course is doing. It's giving us a whole cosmic view of everything saying if you follow your heart, if you follow the joy and you really go for it and it's the one thing that you go for and you determine for it then everything will reconfigure into a, a forgiven world. And that's my experience. I mean I just see that I'm just meeting myself over and over and over and I love myself and I love my Creator and I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. You know, people used to say, just please tone it down and don't use the G word, God, God. so much. It's like, there's people in Europe and people in different parts of the world that are like offended. Offended? I, I'm, I am not embarrassed by God and I'm not embarrassed by using the word Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> there was a time where I was like, Jesus, do you have to use that word. Jesus, you know, Jesus. I was raised a Christian and I had embarrassment around Jesus, but, but no longer. And I do notice that Jesus, to me, is a, is a brother and a symbol of the way shower. And uh, I do notice that about Jesus. He was, not, he was not embarrassed by talking about God. He really talked about God a lot. And I was shy, so I didn't want to talk about anything. And then my parents told me, don't just please don't, whatever you do, don't talk about God or politics. And then my whole life has been talking about God and... Now you know, politics. I come on your show to talk about... <laughs> you bring the bottom up. You bring up Trump and all those things. There is no Trump. <laughs> but we, we do go through it together. <laughs> the joy. We always come to joy. Even today you were wondering a little, like, I don't know if this show will actually be for me. And then I saw when we were talking there, yeah, you had a little yeah. tear in your eye, and I went, there you go, it's it's there, it happened again. I get tricked every time. <laughs> 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 ah. Did you want to say something? Oh yeah, you're off camera. <laughs> <laughs> you can come sit here. Nicholas, you want to? <laughs> We're like <laughs> it's working and tucking. I got a tin box. I had to sit down. <laughs> they bring you out of the sweat lodge to <laughs> see what you've got to say. Yeah, it was just when you were talking about the attraction thoughts thing. That's when you come in here. Yeah. <laughs> Is it okay? Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Just brings up my own judgments just around. <laughs> just feel like all these attractions towards mostly women and, <laughs> and just 
<laughs> you and Jason are the same. thing. Well, that's what I feel. It's like everything Jason always talks about, I feel it's like... It's for you. That's me too, but today really hit emotions. And... Yeah, just... Like, just this feeling of, like, guilt or I'm doing something wrong because it's like... Like this pattern where I... I can't seem to, like, step out of feeling attractions towards certain ones, or even if it's not really given at that time, or at least it doesn't seem like it's given, and, like, I feel, like, unwilling to heal, or, even the whole commitment thing was really hitting me, because I, you know, when I reflect on it, I was like, oh, God, I, I don't feel like the commitment, commitment I'm seeing in others, and, and I don't know what to do to change that. There's just this harshness inside, that's why, you know, I love Andy and I shows because it's always, for me, I'm always teaching what I want to learn. Like being brought in Europe and it was just over and over teaching me, oh, you've done nothing wrong. This is exactly what it needs to look like. Because yeah. I... I didn't to hear that <laughs> over and over. Now let's talk about that too because you have a huge desire to, to teach and learn innocence, to teach that there's been no mistakes, that that everything is being used in a bigger plan. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about those attractions and everything. You know, what comes to me when I hear you talking, and what I've been talking to Jason about, is that we have a, a movie that we use as kind of a training film for everybody in the ministry. We just watch it over and over. I don't know, every year we watch it. Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. And you know, St. Francis was mentioned on Anna's show. And they, they, he had this uh, thing where he was trying to live the life of Jesus. And, uh, as Anna and Ken had a couple, I think one or two uh, quotes from St. Francis, you know, Lord make me an instrument was one of them that they, they used. And he had this great devotion, but uh, in his devotion it was basically his own devotion and then he started to draw forth witnesses and all these brothers started to show up. And then it was continuing on and he was rebuilding Santa Mayango, the, the, the church that had been down and he's rebuilding it stone by stone and then at some point here comes Claire and he's got a ministry of celibate monks and here comes Claire and Claire just wants to join in you know she doesn't care that she's a woman she wants to go for God <laughs> she maybe doesn't have the right form but uh, you know she wants to go for God and he he welcomes her in and he even, she throws her hair down, he cuts her hair, like Mother Teresa did with the sisters. And then, um, and then they go along and it's all these guys, all these monks, and then there's Claire. <laughs> Sounds a little bit like the apostles, Jesus going around and around with all these twelve apostles and all of a sudden Mary Magdala shows up. This wasn't even the first time it happened in history. <laughs> and she just leaves her family, leaves everything behind to come and join these 13 guys. <laughs> and you know, how over history it's been. I'll put all the nuns over here, convents and all the monks over in the monastery. Let's keep them apart. It was too dangerous. Well, Mother, uh, Mary Magdala and Claire showed that there's something deeper going on. Like this other stuff of temptation and men and women. Men and women can't find God if they're near each other. They got to be as far apart as possible. You know, that's just fear based on the form. And even in this ministry, as you come in and you start feeling these att attraction thoughts and to talk to people and so on and so forth, if you notice that even with St. Francis, he had uh, one that was so drawn to be with a woman. The others, you know, would go around and they're monks and they're walking around in their bare feet with their wearing these rags and and eating food that people throw out of buildings <laughs> for them to eat and it's cold and it's wet and it's you know and then this one sees a woman he's so attracted to her and he he wants to be with her and Francis is just walking along the streets with the other ones and they see him and he's like looking in the window and she's in there with a baby and her nursing, and he's just like staring at that scene going, God forgive me a miserable sinner. 
And all he's doing is repeating that line, God forgive me a miserable, miserable <laughs> sinner. And the third, God forgive me a miserable sinner. And then Francis walks up and puts his hand on his shoulder and says, he probably heard you the first time. Well, that's why we like St. Francis. It wasn't like, oh boy, you're messing it up for the whole crew here. It was, oh, he probably heard you the first time. That's an expression session. God doesn't need, Holy Spirit doesn't need three of those. And then, and then he turns to everybody and says, and if this brother, his lack of, of love or lack of want for a woman, you know, distracts him from God, he should go and be with her. And he's basically saying perfectly that he should, he should follow that, you know. And that's what, there's a line in the Bible, there are many mansions in my house. There's all these pathways up the mountain, so to speak, and, and Ken and Anna covered, you know, God can swoop you up <laughs> if you really wanted, you can get transported there in an instant. But for most, they go through all kinds of, of attractions and repulsions, and it's, a, it's an undoing of those things. And I love that about St. Francis, was he was so inclusive that he could embrace all the diversity of form. He wasn't rigid. He wasn't like, you are cast out, like saying, that's not the way to God, or whatever, you know. There's an inclusiveness and love that's there. And we've had people in our ministry, Lisa's son, Polly, you know, one time he was accused mm -hmm. of uh, some improper thing, and, and the whole town was accusing him of something like that. And I remember I sat down in the couches out here, and we had a talk, and he was like saying, but David, I didn't do it, she's accusing me, and I didn't do it. So I had to zoom with him into the innocence, like, just come with me into the innocence. Don't worry about the accusations, don't worry about the judgments. They aren't of God. They, they aren't who you really are. And we did this great healing for the whole universe about, doesn't matter if you're accused, the ego will try to bring many accusers, you know. And so, we have a ministry that's very open. We don't, we are not trying to fit into some kind of box of gay or straight or male or female or, or this predisposition, sexual orientation, everything. It's like coming into such purity where we can feel the love and, and you know, like I think Dalai Lama one time said, love is my religion. He's, again, a beautiful, all, all-encompassing statement. The, the, the experience of love is what it's all about. The theologies and the this and this and that, those are all going to disappear anyway. The, the theologies are just like stepping stones. In all these relationships, that's what Jason was going through with, with marrying Emily, and then you can see the, the conflict is, is the self-concepts start to, you know, collide. I'm a married man, and I'm having these thoughts. Uh oh, there's two different self-concepts in there. And the Holy Spirit's up there laughing, going, come to me, that's an illusion, married man, and men having mm. lustful thoughts, those are both illusions, come higher. You know, the Holy Spirit is so gracious, mm. and always with this gentle, come to me, come to me, come higher, come to me. Mm. Come into the I am. You'll find rest in the I am. You'll never find rest in the concepts mm. of the world. Never. And so even though you feel a twinge of guilt or, or surge of guilt come up, it's just from the identifying with the concepts and the roles. And he says, salvation is nothing more than the escape from concepts. What did Buddha say? Empty your mind. What did Meher Baba say? What have all the mystics and saints said? Come to the divine and leave behind everything that you've believed in, everything that you were clinging to, everything that you were holding to. Because whatever you hold to in this world just reinforces illusions in your mind, not in the truth. God's not squirming like, oh, those, they don't follow me. You know, God isn't anthropomorphic. God doesn't have human emotions. God is pure love. And pure love is just itself. And God knows Christ, and all of us are the Christ. And we're all known by God as perfect pure love. And that's just the fact of it. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. The rest is just leaves blowing in the wind. You know, and we don't have to really 
identify with any of those leaves. Mm. We like to see the dancing leaves. That's why we like to watch, like the Nutcracker Suite. You know, <laughs> da, 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 the dance of the fairy. They're all da 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 You know, where we got to come to the Nutcrackers. <laughs> I see Gail. She's she's right in that vibe with me <laughs> because it's it's joyful. It's it's full of love and full of embrace and there's no exclusion, there's no pushback, there's no wrong, say, pointing a finger and saying that's wrong, that's wrong. If you have the ears to hear this, wow, if you have the ears to hear this, you are, are going to be on for the most glorious experience of your life. It's not that we shouldn't judge because we've done something wrong, it's because God didn't give us the ability to judge in the first place. So we don't really have to stop judging, we have to just realize it was never us. The ego is, a, is a, not a real self. That's the self that judges. And we can look upon that on high and go, oh, cute, and then turn completely back to God. There's, you know, in the end, there's nothing even real about the ego. But we won't know that until we, we give ourselves that allowance. And the other thing is, you know, a lot of times people always are gauging how they're doing based on the past. And we're morphing, our whole community is here based on a devotion to God. So all the symbols are temporary. It's not like some are better than others because what? Who made the symbols? The ego. Mm. Who's using the symbols? The Holy Spirit. Just to show us that all the symbols are the same. Mm. A dog, a daughter, a cup, a leg, a table, mm. a studio. Same, 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 same. There aren't any better illusions, there aren't any worse illusions. We're going way past morality, we're going way past ethics, we're going into a pristine state where we see that there are better illusions and worse illusions. And the, what you're feeling when you feel that guilt or that shame coming up is there's just a judgment where you're saying, oh, there's Nicholas, then there's all these other holy saints that are better than Nicholas, mm -hmm. and Nicholas is still down there, and Nicholas is never no, no, we're all with the saints. Mm -hmm. That's why Ken and Anna were talking about, they love to talk about the saints mm -hmm. and to pray and meditate on that, because we're all saints. We're all angels in training. We're Same. all angels that need both wings, and, and we're going to get them as we rise up. And you used to say that to me about um, St. Francis and that Bernard, was it? Not Bernardo, whatever that guy's name is. Giacondo. Giacondo, I think. I used to hear, yeah, I'm not good enough, I have to have a relationship. This time really listening to you is, with Lewis, it's not that at all, it's just a, it's just a path. Even if, but still welcome within this house, not better or worse right. than people who aren't. Yeah, like crisscrossing on the ways up the yeah. mountain. Oh, hi, you, meeting you again. Fancy meeting you again. You know, it's, it's a joyful thing when we crisscross. We don't need to compare, where'd yeah. you come from? And where are you going? Where are you climbing yeah. to? You know, that's just the ego worry that somebody's finding a faster road or... But it's missing out on the whole dance that we're all mm -hmm. crisscrossing and we're all dancing together and we always have been and we always will until we experience, you know, the perfect oneness, which is... It's another dance, but not this form. Yeah. <laughs> State of mind, <life>, chaos. <laughs> <Gail>. <laughs> Oh, sweeties. Mm. Wow. I can just see it on all your faces. I can see it. You're all so transparent. We're all being touched by the Holy Spirit and we're all lighting up. They were telling me that's a new word that the millennials use nowadays, <laughs> lit. <laughs> You're all lit. <laughs> Everyone in Mexico is gathering together on the next page too. Oh. Oh. 
Precious. Oh, there's the casa and the Casa. virtual. <laughs> La Casa. There's Calico. She's almost sailing, so she's barely on the ground anymore. <laughs> she's getting lifted up. <laughs> oh. That's the Halo Room where we Netta took us on yeah. a tour. That was such an amazing tour that Netta and, and Kristen did. I tell you, I was thinking like, well, anybody who comes to the community, all we have to do is show one video. It's like it covered yeah. everything. Yeah, and yeah. then at the end they go, stay tuned later for part two. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that was just part one. I know. <laughs> it's like, it was great. Oh my gosh. Good editing. Yeah. Yeah. Spectacular. Yeah, thank hey, you, John. everyone. Where, where do you see John? John's on the left. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Patrick. We have 25 Rich. pictures of Yeah, him. I mean, it's just Helena, Bridget. Oh, my gosh. Hearts, 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 hearts. Francis Romero with some Yeah. Room. Yeah. Don and Sarah. Salt Lake City. Oh, Don and Sarah. Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> Devin John, Devin John, I heard you're coming to Strawberry. Are you going to join in and be a berry? Like all of us, we're all berries in the, the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord is feasting on us. <laughs> it's a pretty full time, but maybe you'll stay at Masterpiece. Or a nearby campground. If you come. Oh, there's Frank. Katharina. Julie, 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 I thank you for your light. Helena and Bridget. Nicolene's coming to Obviously. Mexico. Join with Linda. Miriam. Oh. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks for another thank you. episode from the bottom. <laughs> I lost my chair for a good cause. <laughs> this is part of Jason's rehab from the surgery. Now Holy Spirit's got him squatting. <laughs> little by little. <laughs> When's, do you have another, we have another show from the bottom up and next, One more. next week. Yeah. One more show. And thanks to, yeah, Jeffrey, Susanna, for putting together, we're back in the, the cooker. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we'll always find a studio to, to keep beaming our miracle light, our we miracle rug. We three chairs, so we had to <laughs> work this out. It's not only a cooker, but there's a, a metal box. And <laughs> I was looking at Nicholas, he was like down on the floor like a puddle, <laughs> and then he got called out of this metal, it was, it's a soundproof booth for recording, and yeah. we were back in there, yeah, I'm glad you left the door open, because <laughs> that's, that's a cooker. I almost thought, maybe I'll just close it and cry in there, and it started coming out, and I thought, well, it's either going to be on the show or after the show. Oh, you're so willing, <laughs> you, you and Jason are so transparent, you guys are stars now, <laughs> you've got a huge following. They, they like to see people who cry and who tr are transparent and who don't hide things. And Now that's attractive. <laughs> you guys are getting more attractive every show, every moment. Right to you right now. Showing that, whatever, the vulnerability and the willingness underneath that to, to crack open. And uh, yeah, now that's attractive. That may not make the cover of Vogue, but I'll tell you, that is attractive. That is what is truly attractive. Transparency. I'm all for that. Hallelujah for transparency. <laughs> <laughs> no private thoughts, no people pleasing, and fast track to God. That's what Lisa and Cindy took. They, they took the rocket. And all of us can take the rocket if we really want to. Same principle. 
Thank and you, Kelly. My chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you want to say? See you next week. We have one more show and then two <laughs> two weeks off. Love you guys. Love you, Frank. We see you out there. It's dark over there in France, but we see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.